Hey guys, Will Mahan here with Saber Room Design Tutorial Blog with another Photoshop CS5 Extended Tutorial. The other day I was surfing around the web and I came across this really cool tutorial showing how to make a twisted rainbow colored circle design using vector masks and gradients. You can view the design that inspired this tutorial by following the link below. The design was pretty cool and if you need practice with vectors and gradients you should definitely check it out. But if you've been following me long at all, then you know that one of my hooks is to develop techniques for designs that get them out the door as quickly as possible. So after a little experimenting, I was able to develop my own version of the design in just a few minutes. Now I will be using some 3D in this tutorial, so bear in mind you'll need to make sure you're using the extended version of Photoshop CS5 to follow along. Let's go ahead and get started. Go to File and hit New. Create a document size of 1024 by 1024 with a resolution of 100 and click OK. Now reset your foreground and background swatches by clicking here or by hitting the D key. Fill your canvas with white by holding down Control and hitting Backspace. Now go over to your shape tool and choose the rectangle tool. And let's draw out a small rectangle holding Shift as we do to keep it square. About like that. Now go up to the 3D menu and choose Repuse and select a path. Now in the Repuse panel, first let's go to the extrude pane and set the depth to 10. Let's set the twist to 360 and set the X angle to 360. In the materials pane, click all, click this arrow to bring up the menu and choose default for ray trace and click OK and choose the metal iron material. Now if we rotate our shape around we can see that it's already beginning to look the way we want it to look but it's really chunky and the way we smooth that out is by going to the scene settings pane and in the mesh quality field choose best and you'll notice it smooths it right out. Let's go ahead and change the lights to default lights and that's going to do it. Now there is one last thing and this is a very important tip to get in the habit of doing. If you look at our 3D axis tool, you'll notice that it is way out of alignment. And there's really no way to manually align it in Repuse and be sure of accuracy. So before you close the Repuse pane, you should get in the habit of clicking this button right here, which resets the mesh to its original position. Now if we look at our 3D alignment tool, you can see that the X, Y, and Z axes are perfectly aligned with the scene. So go ahead and click OK to close that panel. Now go to Window and 3D to bring up the 3D Tool Panel. And let's click the 3D Object Rotate Tool. And in the Orientation Fields, set the X axis to 90 degrees. Now in the 3D Panel, click this icon to bring up the menu and choose Snap Object to Ground Plane. Open the menu again and choose Ground Plane Shadow Catcher. Now grab the 3D pan camera tool and reposition your shape until it is more or less centered on the canvas. Now click the filter by materials button and click on the shape one extrusion material layer and go down here to the settings area and first change the reflection to zero by clicking and scrubbing to the left. Now up here next to the diffuse field, if you'll notice there's some icons that look like little folders. If we click those, we get some options. Go ahead and choose new texture. And in the window that opens, your size should already be 1024 by 1024. If it's not, set those now and click OK. And now you'll notice the icon has changed. That means our shape is now referencing a new document. So if we click that again, we'll see we have extra options. Choose the open texture option and a new document opens. Now if you've done any of the smart object tutorials this is going to look familiar to you and as a matter of fact it works exactly the same way. Our primary document is now going to reference this sub document. Let's go over and grab our gradient tool, click the linear gradient button and click the gradient field to open the gradient editor. In the gradient presets choose spectrum and click OK. Now starting just shy of the top of the canvas, click and drag down holding shift to keep it straight and release it just shy of the bottom of the document. 
Now go back over to the layers panel and click create new fill or adjustment layer and choose hue saturation. In the lightness field change that to 50 and now we can go ahead and close that. We can close our extrusion material sub document and when prompted to save choose yes and as we can see our object has now been updated with the colors that we placed in the sub document. Now next we want to click the filter by lights button and in the shadows area change the softness to 100 percent. Next click the filter by mesh button and in the shadow opacity field change that to 20 percent. Now I know what you're thinking we've been doing all this stuff with shadows but I don't see any on the canvas and the reason for that is Photoshop's 3D rendering engine doesn't render shadows in real time. We have to do a ray trace render in order to see those shadows. So if we click on the filter by scene button, now about halfway down in the quality field you'll notice there's three options. Interactive painting, ray trace draft, and ray trace final. Now right now we're in interactive painting mode, which means we get some real time rendering but really it's just enough so that we can see what's going on. If we want a preview of what our final version is going to look like, we need to do a ray trace render. So go ahead and select ray trace draft and Photoshop will begin to do some work. Now this of course depends on your system specs, but in ray trace draft mode, as long as there's no transparency or reflection, the whole process should only take about a couple of minutes. Now you'll notice our shadows are a little grainy, but with each pass, that Photoshop makes they will just continue to get smoother and smoother and once it's finished you should end up with something that looks about like this and that's gonna do it for this tutorial I hope you enjoyed it thanks for watching and I'll see you next time